I'm going to be showing you how to make this chest of drawers. I've got these three opening drawers, shaped legs at the bottom, and I've used casters as well. As usual, the cutting list is in the description box below. So, let's get started. So we're going to begin by preparing the leg pieces. Now you'll see in the cutting list that I've given two sizes for the 5x5 five five strip wood. And that's because you can either do the leg as I have done it, so have a straight leg and then going into the shaped part, which I'm going to cut from this spindle. Or you can have a full straight leg and then attach the casters directly to the bottom of the strip. Now whether you're having a shorter leg or the longer full leg, you want to take a piece of fine grade sandpaper, and I'm using a 500 grade, and just very gently round over one end of each of the legs. And this will become the bottom of the leg. And it just looks nicer than having a square at the bottom or a square straight leg at the bottom whether we're leading into the sort of part spindle or into the caster this just makes for a nicer finish so just go round beveling over the edges and you can do that at the corner as well I'm just sweeping the sandpaper over the bottom of the leg like that at each side And then you'll end up with something that looks like that. Those little rounded end there. So do that with each leg. So for the shaped part of my leg, I'm using the inner part of a 24th scale newel post. And I can't even remember where I got these now, but I've had them in my collection for quite a while. And I just really like the shape of that central area. But if you haven't got this, this particular one, you could use any sort of spindle or newel post that you may have. And I've got a few different ones here. And what you want to do is just cut a nice section from it of about 18 millimetres, and that's just under three quarters of an inch long. So you could cut the central part of that, or you could include one of the little ridges at the top there and cut just below where it starts to curve in. I've even just got a really basic straightforward spindle here. So if you cut just below the sort of raised part at the bottom up there to create a foot where we can drill the caster into, and then just take it up by about 18 millimetres. So we, you would just have a bit of a tapered leg with that little ridge on the bottom there. Another similar sort of spindle there. Again, you could just cut so you're leaving that little sort of foot part to attach the caster and then just take it up by 18 millimetres. This one here, there's a nice piece in the centre there that you could use, that nice shaped piece. Maybe leave one of the little ridges on at the bottom, a couple at the top. And if it's more than 18 millimetres or a little bit less, that's okay. You just have a slightly longer or a slightly shorter leg. Another one here, slightly thicker. But bear in mind your top part of your leg is 5mm, so you wouldn't want to go too thick. Maybe that sort of central section there is a little bit chunky for that leg. So try and choose something that's going to flow in nicely from the 5mm leg. Okay, so I'll put those all to one side. I'm just using my mitre block and saw to really carefully cut these so that I'm leaving the little sort of raised bits intact. And I'm not sure what sort of wood these spindles are made from, but it's usually quite thin wood, and when you're sawing it, it can split quite easily, so just be really careful with it, and just saw sort of really so slowly. There's my little section, and that will go on the bottom of my leg like that. And then very gently sand off the sawn areas. So 
So we're now going to drill a hole in each end of the little shaped leg part. And one end will obviously be for the caster and the other end will be to attach it to the leg to add a bit of strength. So I've got my desk vise here attached to the edge of my desk and I've got a piece of kitchen towel in which you probably know by now is to stop the jaws of the vise from actually denting the wood. Now I'm just going to find my centre by eye and you can do that if you're good at sort of taking measurements by eye but if not just use your rule to find the centre of the piece and put a little pencil dot in the centre there. I'm just going to secure that in like that and I don't want to go too tight because I really don't want to mark that leg. And then in my drill here I've got a 0.7mm drill bit. So you just want to use one of your finer drill bits that's around the same thickness as a dressmaking pin which is what we'll be using to strengthen the leg. So hold the drill as upright as you can and keep it straight as you drill down so that you're not going to split through the leg. You want to go down by about a quarter of an inch or six millimetres and to check that you can take one of your dressmaking pins and just pop that into the drilled hole then put your thumbnail at the top and pull it out and then you can see how far down you've drilled. I've gone a little bit more than six millimetres there which is fine. So do that with each of the legs and remember to do the hole at both ends. And then we're going to do the same thing again with the piece of strip wood and on the shaped end, so on the end that we sort of rounded over. So again, find the centre and use your rule if you're not very good at measuring by eye. And again, drill down by about a quarter of an inch or six millimetres. Do that with each of the legs. So to join the legs together, take one of your dressmaking pins and use your pliers to snip off the head. Go just below the head there. And then snip that roughly in half. And I just bent that one, so I'm just going to use the top half of that one. And then poke that into one part of the leg like that. And then I'm still going to use a little bit of glue just around the sort of base of the pin there. And then attach the shaped part of the leg. carefully and then give them a good firm press together. Make sure that your shaped part is sitting straight on there. Use a spare cocktail stick to remove any excess glue from around the join. And then that piece can be left to dry. So do the same with each of the legs. Pop that on there like that. So whilst the legs are drying, we're going to attach the mouldings to the back and the side pieces and we're just placing the mouldings at the top and bottom of each piece. So I've got here a cocktail stick to apply the glue and then a spare cocktail stick to remove any excess glue from around the mouldings. So always begin by choosing the nicest side of your moulding. And that's a really good habit to get into. And then if you find any little sort of nicks in the wood or anything like that, any little dents, 
you can glue that side down. That way you've always got the nicest side of the wood facing forwards. Glue that along the top there like that. And then I'm just going to bring in a spare piece of strip wood. And I like to press both pieces up against it. And that way you've, you know you've got a nice flush top edge there. Like that. Carefully remove your excess glue. And then attach the remaining moulding to the other end. Again, checking for the nicest side. And I've also got here to my right my um, basket of clothes pegs or clothes pins. And I'm going to be using those to secure the mouldings into place. And I always like to use mouldings on pieces. Not only does it add a bit of detail, but also it adds strength to the piece. Like that. And then you can peg those into place. You can use your mini clamps to do this as well. And that piece can then be put to one side to dry. And you can do the same with the back piece and the remaining side. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove your clothes pegs and then sand gently along each edge of each piece just to ensure that you've got no overhanging mouldings and that you've got nice straight edges along each side. So just with your sandpaper flat on your work surface, sweep it along in one direction that on both sides and don't rock it back and forth like that or you'll round off these corners. So do that with each piece and I've done these and if you find that you've got a lot of moulding overhanging in any areas it might be that you've cut it just a little bit too long you can turn the piece over and just use your craft knife just to trim along the edges. So what we're going to do now is attach a leg to each side of each side piece. So apply glue along the sides of your side pieces. <laughs> There's a lot of sides there. Pop that back down on your work surface and then attach the leg so that you've got a nice flush line along the top here. And again with the legs, although there's not a lot of difference, I always attach the nicest edge so that it's facing forwards. So if you sort of had any knots or anything in the wood, or little grazes or anything, then you can place them so that they're going to be tucked inside. So press it together and at the same time make sure that it's all flat against your work surface. Sometimes when you're attaching legs you can tend to push them inwards like that and then you end up with a, a, a top part that isn't going to be nice and square. You'll have sort of corners, or turned in corners rather. So give it a good press and then you can hold on to that and at the same time remove your excess glue if you have any. Right in there like that. Another firm press and then just slide that piece along and you can leave that to dry. Slide it along rather than trying to pick it up or you might just pull it apart. And then do the same with the remaining side and legs. And that piece can be left to dry as well. So we're almost ready to begin construction, but before we do that, we're going to make pencil lines across the back and side pieces for placement of the shelves. So we'll start with the back, so turn it lengthways like that. And the first pencil mark is going to be 18 millimetres from what will become this top edge. So place your rule there. 
and 18 millimeters from the top and 34.5 millimeters from the top and in inches that's 45 60 fourths of an inch and 1 and 23 60 fourths of an inch so do those little pencil lines at each side of the back piece so 18 millimeters 34 and a half millimeters 45 60 fourths of an inch and 1 and 23 60 fourths of an inch and then turn the piece the right way around place the rule switch just below the pencil marks so that you're allowing for the thickness of your pencil tip and join them up you can then bring in your side pieces and we're going to do the same thing again When I'm marking up the side pieces, I just do it on the actual side and I don't continue the line onto the leg. And that's just because the shelves are only going to sit on that inside edge and it makes it more difficult to erase the pencil marks on the legs once the piece is constructed. So just do it on that central area. So again, 18 millimetres, 34.5. And that's 45 60 fourths of an inch, 1 and 23 60 fourths of an inch. And again, join those up, just sticking to that inside piece there. And then do the same with your remaining side piece. Now construction can commence. So we're going to begin attaching the back piece to one of the side pieces and it will sit towards the front edge of the back legs. We don't want to put it right back to the back of the piece. We're putting it so that it's along the join really between the leg and the side piece. So I'll glue it into place and then I'll pick it up and show you a bit more clearly what I mean. But I do construct a lot of my furniture in this way. So if you're familiar with my tutorials, you'll probably know how things go together. So get that into position. Your pencil lines will line up and you want to make sure you've got a flush line along the top there. So it's sitting right at the top of the piece. Press that into place, keeping it as upright as you can. Rid of that bit of excess glue and I'm going to do the same around the back there as well. You can probably see there what I mean about the positioning but let me see if I can pick that up and show you some sort of bird's eye view. So we've got that same little lip at the back there as we have on the side like that. So keep your piece on its side and bring in one of your four pieces. So we've got the top, the bottom and the two shelves. And they're all identical, so just bring in one of those pieces. And this is going to sit at the top here so that it's on the inside edge of those pieces. So apply glue to a long and a short edge. And apart from those... Um, little festive fun projects I did over Christmas. I can't remember what the last tutorial was that I did. It just seems like it was such a long time ago. So it's really good to be getting back to furniture tutorials. So get your the side of the piece lined up with the top of the side there. I'm just using my thumb to make sure I've got a nice flush edge. Push that corner in as well. And then you can bring your back piece in to meet it. So see how I was just pushing that forward there. It's probably only about a millimetre, but that then squares the whole thing up. Okay, make sure you've got that nice flush line. Corners can sort of tend to try and push outwards. So always make sure your corner is sitting where it should and then give everything a good firm press like that. again remove your glue 
from the inside edge and I do that because obviously it can't be seen but if it dries hard then it may prevent the draw from going all the way in. If, the, if it's trying to sort of go downwards then make sure you push it up so that it's flush and as the glue dries things do sort of try to move around so always keep looking and checking that everything's staying where it should. Okay so now bring in your second of those pieces and this will be our first shelf and these shelves are going to be sitting above the pencil lines. So again apply your glue to a, a short and a long edge. And I'm just going to have to turn away for a moment but again I'm just positioning the side first it's sitting above that pencil line and then I can manoeuvre the back to make sure that I'm in the right position. So it's sitting above but you can just see the pencil line just below the piece of wood. So line it up first and then you can again give it a good firm press. Press against the back of the unit as well and push it right into that corner. just bringing my spare piece of strip wood back in because I can't get my finger in there now I'm just going to use a pair a piece of strip wood and just push that corner down just very slightly it's just a little bit high so that's a thing to check as well I we want that to be nice and square otherwise we'll have trouble with the drawers again get rid of your excess glue and we're going to do the same thing again with our next shelf piece. Actually, it might have been the bed that I did last, was it, for the guest bedroom? The bed with the padded headboard. That might have been it. So again, this is going to be sitting above the next pencil line, so you can just see the line. Get it lined up as we did for the first one. Do your side first and then manoeuvre the back so that you can just about see that line. Press it all into place. It went into place easier that one. You find that sometimes. And I wanted this sort of long draw look, but if you would, you know, wanted rather than three long drawers to maybe have six half size drawers and you could make a divide to fit into each of these openings or you might just want two drawers at the top. Also all of mine are the same height and that's because I've got to fit my drop handles onto the front but if you wanted to have a narrower drawer at the top and then getting wider as you go down you can do that and it just means you would put your pencil lines in different places so there's lots of ways you can you know personalize my tutorials to suit your own style or the room that you're actually making them for so always have a think about that you don't have to do it exactly as I'm doing it And this is the final piece, so the bottom piece, and this is going to sit flush with that bottom edge. So again, I'll just put it into position. Do you want a nice flush line along the bottom edge? So get that side in place first, and then you can push the back piece in to meet it, therefore squaring it all up. The bottom piece lined up there, and then push your back in. Ooh without knocking the bottom piece out. Okay, so I've got a nice flush line along there still. Give that a press and hold. I'm not really happy with that bottom so I'm just going to push it up a little bit more. 
it might just be the sort of angle I'm viewing it from. It looks like it was higher, but no, it's not. It's nice and flush. It'll just be the shadow. And then press it all together. Like that. Again, just get inside and remove any excess so that we don't have trouble later on with the drawers. I'm just going to let that dry just for a moment. We're now going to attach the remaining side piece. So apply glue along each of the edges or the ends. And then attach the side piece so that you've got a nice flush line along the top edge there. And you also want the shelves to be sitting flush along the front of the front leg. So start by getting your sort of top piece lined up and then you can make sure it's lined up along that front. And then what you can do is just carefully pick it up and then make sure that your see how the bottom there is sort of trying to lift up. So make sure that that's flush with the side. And then peep inside and line it up with your pencil lines. So again, they should just be sitting just above the little pencil lines in there. And the bottom piece is trying to lift again, so I'm going to get that into position. Shelf down a bit as well. I'm going to hold on to it and give it a good press. At the same time, make sure your top piece is staying where it should, so you've got a nice flush piece now. So give it a good press together and then we'll grab some masking tape and secure it and then we can leave it until the glue has dried. So I'm going to keep hold of that and get rid of that glue on the inside there. making sure that bottom and top piece are staying where they should. So I'm going to put it on its side like that and just put a piece of tape right over the side. So place it over like that. You want to pull it nice and tightly but at the same time make sure you're not knocking any of the pieces out of place. Put that down like that. And then I'm going to lay it onto its back like that and put a couple of pieces right over the front. Again, pull it nice and tightly. And that's sort of holding the whole piece together and holding those shelves in place as well. can then be left to dry. So whilst that piece is drying we're going to shape our chest of drawers top and this is the piece cut from your 2.5 millimeter thick sheet wood and we're going to bevel along the front long edge and both sides. So hold the piece at a 45 degree angle against your sandpaper and sweep it towards you keeping it at that angle. As you can see, that's just starting to bevel off. So keep going until you've got a nice, sharp, even bevel all the way along. Like that. And then do the same at each side. You can then tidy that piece up in your hand with a piece of 500 grade sandpaper. We're now ready to attach the top piece, so apply, apply glue to the top of the unit. Glue's just starting to go a little bit claggy. So I should still be able to use it. Make sure you get the glue right along the edges and right into those corners as well on top of the legs. And I've got here 
ready my masking tape and my clamps as well. When I'm attaching a top piece, I always like to use clamps along the front edge, which secures it nicely into place. Get those lumps out of there. So bring in your top piece and we're going to attach it so that the straight edge, so the unbeveled edge, is sitting along the back of the back legs and so that we've got an even overhang at each side. So get it into place so that you've got that nice flush line along the back and I'm just feeling with my fingers there to make sure that it's sitting to the back edge of the back legs. So you don't want it flush with the actual back of the unit but the back legs like that. Get it lined up there first and then look from the front to make sure that you've got an even overhang at each end and that's usually the thickness of the bevel that we've created. And I think that looks about right and then you'll have that nice flowing line along the front, the bevel sort of coming up from the top of the top piece there. I also like how the corner of the bevel follows the line of the corner of the leg. So that's something else you can check for. Okay, so give that a good press. And when you're pressing, I'm holding onto the supported part of the side. So don't press onto the bottom because it's only sort of 1.5. You'll probably end up splitting it if you press too hard. And at the top there, I'm pressing down on top of the legs again where it's well supported. So give it a good press and then I'm going to hold on to it like that and just remove the excess glue around all of those edges. Like that. Oh, thank you. Nice cup of tea just arrived. <laughs> and then I'm going to put a piece of masking tape right across the top there. I'm going to go towards the back edge first. Again, pull it nice and tightly. Stick it down to the sides there. And then I'm going to put a piece across that front as well. And when you're attaching the top piece, you normally find that it tries to lift away from the wood and you can see there that it already is lifting away from that front piece so that's why I like to use the clamps as well and I really like these orange tipped ones which are really nice and tight. Now I've got five here so let's see if we can fit all of them on and I think you know my catchphrase by now about you can never use too many clamps <laughs> and then oh twisted that and then you get a nice solid piece with no gaps. And as well, these go onto a sort of flat piece of wood really easily, but if you're ever attaching them to, you know, a piece of strip wood or something, always just make sure they are actually clipped on before you let go of them. Otherwise they can sort of ping off and fly up into your face, so just just make sure that they are actually attached. I don't know if you can see in there now. If you look in there, you can see that we've got a nice tight line across there now. No gap in. So I'm going to leave that to dry and I'll lay it on its back because now it's top heavy. It will just topple forwards. And then we can cut our draw pieces. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove your masking tape and then I've just given that a gentle sand just to remove any pulls that the masking tape may have left. Now again, if you follow my tutorials, you'll know that I always advise to cut the draw pieces after construction of the main unit and that's just so that we can get accurate measurements. Now also I always give sizes in the cutting list but they are to be used as a guide. as slight misplacement of any of these pieces will affect the size of the drawer opening. So I always advise construct this piece, measure and then cut the pieces that you'll need for the drawers. And even in my case, I've got 
a, about half a millimetre difference between a couple of my drawers. So one is 14.5 millimetres and the other is 15. So I've obviously placed one of these shelves a little bit lower than I should have done. But it doesn't matter because of the because it will always be such a slight difference. You're never really going to notice when you're looking at the piece that the drawers are different sizes. So when you measure the opening, you want to measure the height, width and depth. And then you want to deduct probably half a millimeter, if that, from your from each of those measurements. And that will then allow the drawer to slide in and out smoothly and always measure each opening separately as like I said they can be slightly different and when I'm doing long drawers like this I always measure at each end as well and then if you've got a slight difference at one end actually cut the piece so that you've got the slight difference so you would cut it say for example 15 millimeters at one end and it might be 14 and a half at the other so cut that piece in a slant so that and then you can try it in like that and then it will fit and again you're not going to notice that there's a slant in it when you're actually looking at the piece. So do actually cut your pieces to fit exactly into the opening. And then when you've cut your pieces, to actually construct the door, the draw, sorry, begin by applying glue along each edge of the base piece. And as I did then, stand in that piece into the opening. I do that with all pieces, just to make sure that they all fit nicely into the opening. And then you can attach the sides to the outer edge of the base, making sure that you've got nice straight lines along each edge of the drawer. And what I'm actually going to do is, again, grab those spare pieces of strip wood. And then what you can do is actually press the side pieces against the base using the strips and that way you get even pressure all the way along to give them a good press and then just very carefully slide that piece along your work surface again rather than picking it up and risk breaking it and we'll just leave that to dry off for a moment and then you can move on to the next drawer and I've laid them out here again in order just because of that slight difference so I've got sort of top, middle and bottom and I'll keep them in that order even when I'm painting them so that I know where they go. Or you can write sort of top, middle and bottom inside the drawer so you know which one, which one goes where. It's very unlikely when you're doing um, sort of several drawers of the same size that they are all actually going to be exactly the same size so don't worry if you have sort of placed the shelves slightly differently slide that along and the final one so once you've fitted the side you can come back to your first drawer which should now be dry enough to handle and apply the glue along the front and back edges and then we can attach the front and back pieces. And I've just fished out a long piece of strip out of my little drawer. And again, I'm going to press these pieces into place. And again, when you're working on a longer drawer, the strips really help to sort of press it all together without misshaping it. So pop that back down and then attach the front and back pieces so that you've got nice flush ed edges again along each side and you may need to pull the side pieces up just to meet meet the front and back piece and keep it all oh keep it all nice and square gentle press and I'm going to bring these pieces in and press together like that and that way I'm pressing all the way along and creating a nice square draw that can then be left to dry and once it has completely dried we can very gently sand around all edges to smooth that off and then it will slide in and out nicely 
when we come to fit it into the opening. Pop that one there. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, you can just very gently sand the drawers on all edges and then try them into place. And if they're a little bit tight, do a little bit more sanding, but only ever do a little bit at a time and then try again and sand again if you need to. Otherwise, you might end up with gaps around the edges. All of these pieces are now ready for paint. Get those drawers out of there. And when I'm painting, I don't paint inside the drawer openings. I just do a little light brush around the outside edges, just so that there's no natural wood showing through once the drawers are in place. So the first coat of paint has now completely dried. So I'm about to give this a gentle sand and then apply a second coat. And to create this sort of off-white color, I mixed a very, very pale gray almost like a sort of silvery grey, in with a bright white, so sort of like an arctic white. So it's one part grey and four parts white. And I had sort of a half a tub here, so I've mixed it in there and I'll keep that for the rest of the furniture. I don't particularly like using just bright white on furniture, but I did want you know, light coloured furniture in the room. And if you have a look at the wallpaper, you can actually see that the background of the wallpaper is a very similar colour to, to what I've created. And there is actually a very pale grey feather in the pattern. So I think this will fit in there really nicely. So I'm now going to use a 500 grade sandpaper to give this a really light sand, and then I'll do a second coat. So my paint has now completely dried and I've given that a final sand. So I'm now ready to attach the hardware and I'm going to make a start with the casters. So these little casters that I'm using were originally brass. You can probably see that on the top there and a really sort of bright gold colour. And I used Humbrol metallic paints to create this antique brass effect so that they would match the little draw pulls that I'm using. And that's a really handy technique to know if ever you're trying to match hardware. So I'll link to that video at the end of this one. And hopefully that's something that you'll find helpful. So I'm just going around with a dressmaking pin, just poking it into each of those drilled holes, just to make sure none of them are bunged up with paint. So we'll have trouble getting the, the caster in like that. And then I've got a little bit of glue here as well. So even though the casters fit quite snugly, I like to apply glue as well, just to make sure that they're extra secure. So just pop a little bit of glue around the top of the foot there. And then push the little stem of the caster into place. I'm going to grab those tweezers again and push it underneath the wheel and just push that down. And just use your cocktail stick to remove any excess glue. I think that looks really good. So I've marked up my drawers here and I've done the pencil marks 12 millimetres in and that's half an inch and then 3.5 millimetres from the top which is just over one eighth of an inch and then the way the design works you've got like this little sort of petal thing around the outside there so the top of that will be one millimetre from the top of the drawer and then I want to place them <laughs> so that the little sort of loop that holds the handle is going across 
because then that makes the little drop shorter. If I place them that way then they're just slightly longer and I want them to be shorter so that they sit nicely at the front of the drawer without hanging over onto the second drawer. So I've got here in my drill my 1.2 millimeter bit which is the thickness of the little stem at the back of the pull there. I'm just going to carefully drill these holes and when you do that make sure you're not putting too much pressure on your draw front So again, I'm just going to use a little bit of glue on the back of the pull, just to really secure it into place. Maybe tweezers. And then pop that into place so that my loop is going from left to right. Make sure it's sitting flat against your draw front. I think I just need to push that in a little bit more. Pull it in from the back as well. I think that looks really pretty. And there is the completed unit. And I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. I think that's going to look really nice in that lovely teal coloured bedroom. And I really like these handles as well, all these little pulls. I haven't used this particular design before. I'm really pleased with how they look. And I'll be using these on all of the furniture in the bedroom. And I think the casters just add a really nice detail as well. Make it look like a really sort of old chest of drawer unit. And I'm looking forward to trying this inside the doll's house. So let's go and see how it looks. And there is the chest of drawers in its new home. I think that looks perfect there. Really looking forward to creating some accessories and miniatures to go on top of there. And I'd like to make a canvas wall print to go above it. And that will all be in an up and coming episode here on YouTube. But for today, that's all. So take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.